Hey guys, it's Alex, and today I am here with another book review that officially marks the start of my reviewing books grossly out of order. I finished this book just yesterday, and even though I have three books from August that I still need to review, I decided to go with this one because I had a lot of thoughts. And it is The Boy in the Striped Pajamas by John Boyne. This is a young adult novel set in Germany in the 1940s about a nine-year-old boy who's the son of the Commandant of Auschwitz. Bruno, the main character, winds up meeting Schmuel, who is a Jew, imprisoned at Auschwitz. The story follows their friendship on two different sides of the fence. This is a book that I'd heard a fair bit about without really knowing too much about it. I did know that it was about a child of a Nazi officer during World War II. I didn't know too much other than that. And honestly, I found myself kind of disappointed by this book. I gave it three stars, and I did think it was a good book, but it wasn't one that particularly stood out to me. And just for how much I've heard about it, I was expecting a little more than just a fine book, which is pretty much what I wound up thinking. To start with the positives, I did like Bruno's voice. I thought it was a fairly accurate depiction of a young child who lived an incredibly sheltered life, and I found it interesting, all his misunderstandings. But I was really entertained by this book, and I really wanted to follow it through to the end. It took me about a week to read, but I only really read it in two or three sittings. It was really quick, it was sort of lovely in its simplicity, and I did enjoy that aspect. But getting into the negatives, I wound up being fairly frustrated by Bruno's voice. I did think it was well done, but I didn't enjoy reading the whole story from his point of view. He almost felt a little bit too sheltered. Like growing up in Nazi Germany, I kind of have a difficult time believing that he had no idea what a Jew was at age 10. I, I feel like at some point there had to be some discussion that he was privy to either in school or with his friends or with his parents. And the fact that he made it until 10 without getting any of that really just seemed a bit off to me. He did seem awfully young. I know 9 is very young and he turns 10 throughout the book. And I do know that 9 year olds are little kids, but it almost seemed like he was too young. At one point he mentions that he's been living in Auschwitz for a year because he's now turned 10 and he can't remember any of the names of his friends anymore from back home in Berlin. And that part I found a little bit too much. Like, Nine is a little kid, but I switched schools at age nine, and I, even though I didn't see any of my old friends again, I could still tell you who they were. I didn't forget their names completely. That just seemed a little bit odd. But I am willing to put some of that up to. I just don't have much interaction with children, so maybe I just assume they act older than they really do. So take that critique with a grain of salt. I did find myself getting a little bit annoyed by his childish voice. It's just a problem that I routinely have when books are narrated by young children about more difficult topics so that you can see how like limited their perception is. That's just always a difficult thing I think to write as well as a difficult thing to read. It's always something that has to be like overcome in the narrative rather than something I instinctively enjoy. And just in this, I didn't really find that there was sort of like that adult push behind it. Room has a similar thing with an even younger child. And I do feel like despite the limited perception in that, Room did a fantastic job of having like that adult feeling behind the very childish voice in a way that I'm not quite sure that this book did. There were also a very few small language things that bothered me throughout the book. Bruno as a child would hear his parents or other adults say things and he would often mishear them or like think they were something else. He consistently calls Hitler the Fury because he's heard his parents call him the Fuhrer before and he's mishearing and mispronouncing Fuhrer as Fury, which I don't have a problem with that as a device. It just sort of bothers me because specifically for that one, I have two issues. One is that Fuhrer is a fairly normal German word. It just means leader. It seemed odd to me that a 10 year old child wouldn't know the word for leader and instead mispronounced it as fury. And the second, which was my problem overall when a lot of these things happened, is that it sort of ruined my suspension of disbelief a little bit. 
because he would mishear these things as English words. I, that really bothered me because I, I'm reading this in English, but like in my head and in real life, they'd have been speaking German. So the fact that he was making all these English mistakes sort of just like irritated me. Like I know that's not a big thing. I just really don't like when that happens. He did it with Auschwitz too. He kept pronouncing it as out with, which really isn't how the Germans would have said it. They have said the W like English speakers say a V. So it would have been Auschwitz. It was just something that like I kept noticing popping up and they're such small and consequential things, but just something that I, I kept noticing and it kept bothering me. There were pretty much only two big complaints because I know the two previous ones were sort of like smaller, but the two big ones, first was that it shifted POV. I didn't like that it shifted POV. I felt like the strength of this story was that it was told from such a sheltered, limited perception. Bruno doesn't know much. Bruno doesn't have much actual perception of the world, but it would occasionally give you Schmuel's thoughts or his sister Gretel's thoughts. And that sort of ruined the voice for me because we would occasionally just get these inserts of what Gretel was thinking or what Schmuel was thinking. And I didn't care necessarily. It sort of ruined that aspect of the book, which was most of the point for me. And the final biggest critique that I have is just that I didn't mesh well with the writing style. It's written very, very young, like it's intended for a middle grade audience, but it's obviously not actually intended for a middle grade audience because of the subject matter and mostly because of how the subject matter is portrayed. I would almost recommend it to like younger kids because it is written in such a way that the writing style and the characters I think would really be good for them to read. But it doesn't actually talk about anything. It sort of talks around issues. Like my example earlier, Bruno always calls Hitler the Fury. And the fact that it's Hitler is never once mentioned. But adults and teenagers can quite easily tell from context clues that his parents said Fuhrer and he misheard it as the Fury and they're actually referring to Hitler. There were a lot of those throughout the book. Like the same with Auschwitz. He never once calls it Auschwitz. It's just sort of you come to that conclusion on your own with your outside knowledge. And I don't necessarily think that like a young child would be able to come to that outside knowledge. And I think I'd have liked it if it was actually written as a middle grade novel because it felt like a middle grade novel and it didn't have, I think, the adult push behind it that older books narrated by children have. I'd have really appreciated this book more if it had been intended for nine-year-olds, which it says very clearly on the back that it's not a book intended for nine-year-olds. Just for me, it wasn't the right book. I didn't, I didn't dislike it at all. I thought it was a very simple, lovely book. I gave it three stars. I thought it was good. I was just really expecting it to hit me emotionally and it didn't at all. It sort of just wound up being fine and I can understand why people would like it, but it wasn't anything special for me. I was really disappointed because I was so looking forward to this book. Let me know down below if you read The Boy in the Striped Pajamas and what you thought of it if you have. I know my giving it three stars is somewhat of an unpopular opinion, I think, just because of how many people I've seen say they loved it. But I'd like to hear if anyone else had similar thoughts to mine or different thoughts from mine. Just talk to me about this book in the comments. I always love to have conversations in the comment sections of my reviews. It's one of my favorite things on booktube. As always, thank you so much for watching and commenting, and I will talk to you guys again soon. Bye!